Hi, hello. This is Dr. Jagadish Narendra Prasad, Senior Lecturer in Botany, Sri Chaitanya Goshala Vijayawada. Today, let us discuss about biomolecules. In the biomolecules, let us go with the introduction part. We all know that there is a wide diversity in the living world. This living world or living organisms are composed of different kinds of chemicals, including different kinds of elements and also different kinds of chemical compounds. Chemical compounds including both organic as well as inorganic compounds. So how to find out the different elemental composition of a living organism? To find out the elemental composition, one has to do elemental analysis of plant tissues or animal tissues or a microbial paste. Elemental analysis we have to do. So when you do the elemental analysis, you can find a list of elements present in the living organisms. You can also know respective content of these elements in the living organisms. Means their respective content, the content in the biomass also can be known with the help of this elemental analysis. If you do similar kind of analysis by taking earth crust as an example for non-living things. If you do the same kind of analysis by taking a piece of earth crust as an example for non-living thing so that we can find almost similar kind of list of elements as we observed in case of living organism. That means absolutely we don't find any difference in the list of elements of non-living things as well as living things. Exactly same similar kind of elements you can find. However, the relative abundance of carbon and hydrogen will be more in any living organism when compared to when compared to other elements. Let us take an example here. Here I have given a comparison of elements present in non-living as well as living organism. Here I am giving a comparative list between earth crust and human body. If you look at look into this, look at here hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur. These five elements are more in human body when compared to the earth crust. You can observe in the list, take hydrogen 0.14% of weight, whereas in human body it is 0.5%. Carbon 0.03% in earth crust, but in human body it is 18.5%. Oxygen is 46.6%, whereas in human body it is 65%. Nitrogen is very little in the soil, whereas it is 3.3 in the human body. Sulfur is 0.03, whereas in human body it is 0.3. So these five elements are more in human body when compared to that crust. Whereas if you take sodium, calcium, magnesium, silicon, these four elements are more in at crust when compared to human body. More in at crust. This is what we can see with regard to elemental composition. So when come in any living organism, when compared to the earth crust in any living organism, the two elements are absolutely high, like carbon and hydrogen. Whereas hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur are more in human body than earth crust. Whereas sodium, calcium, magnesium and silicon are more in earth crust when compared to the human body. This is what we can see here. Now, if you go into the details of understanding about various kinds of chemical compounds present in the living things, particularly organic compounds. Then we have to do chemical analysis of a living tissue for to find the chemical organic compounds present in the living organisms. One has to do chemical analysis. This chemical analysis can be done by taking any living tissue say for example a piece of vegetable or a piece of liver etc. Then after taking this vegetable or a piece of 
vegetable or a piece of uh, liver then so a living tissue is grinded by taking trichloroacetic acid trichloroacetic acid Cl3CCOOH or CCL3COOH anything you can write by taking these two components the living tissue is grinded when you grind the living tissue in the trichloroacetic acid you will be getting thick slurry otherwise called extract you will be getting extract if you strain this extract by using a cheesecloth or cotton, you will be getting two fractions. One is acid soluble pool and other one is acid insoluble acid soluble pool and acid insoluble pool the acid soluble pool is also called filtrate more technically it is filtrate whereas the acid insoluble pool is the retentate so in this procedure we are finding out the various kinds of organic compounds present in the living tissues for this i said the living tissue is grinded by adding trichloroacetic acid and then we will be getting an extract or a thick slurry. This thick slurry is then strained through a cheesecloth or a cotton. As a result of that, you are going to get two kinds of fractions. One is acid soluble pool and other one is acid insoluble pool. Acid soluble pool is also called filtrate and acid insoluble pool is also called retentate. The acid soluble pool contain thousands of organic compounds. This is very, 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 very important. Thousands of organic compounds are present in acid soluble pool. Whereas in acid insoluble pool, you can find around 5 macromolecules and 4 macromolecules and 1 micromolecule. Like you can find the nucleic acids, proteins, apart from that polysaccharides, these 3 are macromolecules. You can also find lipids as a micromolecule in acid insoluble pool. This is what you are going to get when you do the tissue analysis or chemical analysis of a tissue. So once this tissue is analyzed, in the next step, one has to isolate a particular compound from all other compound. For this, the extract has to be subjected for, the extract has to be subjected for various separation techniques. Very, 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 very important. Various separation techniques we have to do. As a result of this, one can separate a particular compound from all other compounds. This separation techniques like chromatography we can use. Chromatography, this is one kind of separation technique. So when you do such kind of separation techniques, it is possible to isolate one compound from all other compounds. So once a particular compound is purified, then this compound is subjected to analytical techniques. When analytical techniques are applied, as a result of this, it is possible to know the molecular formula of the compound and also probable structure of the compound. This is what we can know. It is possible to know molecular formula and probable structure of the compound. So, by these methods, it is possible to know 
all the carbon containing organic compounds present in the living tissues all these carbon containing organic compounds present in the living tissues itself are also called biomolecules so biomolecules are the organic compounds with carbon present in the living tissues so various carbon containing compounds simply to say biomolecules so once this biomolecules is identified then in the next step we have to understand how to isolate one particular compound like how to isolate various kinds of elements present in the living tissues till now we have observed the various kinds of organic compounds and their isolation now i am going to discuss how to isolate the various kinds of elements present in the living tissues for to isolation of, for the isolation of inorganic elements and compounds present in the living tissues we have to follow a slightly different but destructive experiments it is a kind of destructive experiment in this we have to take a living tissue a piece of living tissue that may be a leaf tissue or a liver tissue so this fresh leaf or liver tissue will give you its fresh weight we are going to get its fresh weight when you dry it this fresh leaf or liver tissue is dried the water present in the living tissue is get evaporated after that you will be getting dry weight once the water evaporates you will be getting dry weight then after that this dried living tissue is then completely burnt in a crucible under high temperature around 450 degrees celsius of temperature at high temperature it is burnt as a result of this we can get during this burning process the living tissue is completely oxidized like it is burnt and all carbon compounds are get oxidized as a result of this carbon dioxide water is get evaporated and whatever that remains is nothing but ash whatever that remains is nothing but ash so when you do the ash analysis you can find the list of elements present in the living tissues like calcium magnesium etc etc it is now understood that elemental analysis can help us to know different types of elements present in the living tissues different types of elements in the sense like carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen chlorine etc etc compound analysis will help us to know different kinds of chemical compounds present in the living tissues both inorganic and organic compounds here we have to know a very important thing that acid soluble pool i already told acid when you do staining of a living extract we are going to get two kinds of fractions right acid soluble pool and acid insoluble pool the acid soluble pool contain thousands of organic compounds i said right apart from that acid soluble pool also contain inorganic compounds like sulfates phosphates sodium chloride etc such compound called calcium carbonate such kind of compounds are also present in the uh, acid insoluble pool so elemental analysis helps us to know the different types of our list of elements present in the living tissues whereas compound analysis helps us to know different types of inorganic and organic chemical compounds present in the living tissues very 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 important now so the compound analysis can help us to know different types of inorganic compounds and organic compounds in chemistry point of view these organic compounds are 
identified as different functional groups like aldehyde, ketones, aromatic compounds, whereas in biology point of view, These functional groups in the biology point of view are recognized as amino acids, nucleotide bases, fatty acids, etc. This is what we are going to get in the living tissues. So, the living tissue is made with different types of inorganic elements, inorganic compounds and organic compounds are also present. So, all these organic compounds with carbon itself are known as biomolecules. So, these biomolecules like with respect to the bio biology point of view, the organic compounds present in the living tissues are identified as amino acids, nucleotide bases, fatty acids, etc. Different kinds of other biomolecules are also present. These are the major three, three groups. In this, we have to know one by one. Like first, we will be discussing about amino acids and then we are also going to discuss what is the use of these amino acids in the body, how these amino acids are useful, what is a protein, protein structure, all the details. And then we will be discussing about fatty acids, nitrogen bases, nucleotides. So, like this, we have to discuss all the chemical compounds present in the living tissues in the biomolecules chapter. Thank you.